So uh, tell me, ask me, so are you the, the journalist, right? You gotta ask me some question here. Okay, uh, so when did you first come to China? 2003. I was uh, shooting uh, my first long feature film. It was a road movie from uh, Paris to Beijing. It, it was a nightmare. Oh, uh, it was a cool nightmare, but technically wise, it was a nightmare. And how did, uh, were, were you originally, of course, from Paris? So yes, um, I, I, yeah, I was originally shooting, well, I'm from Paris originally, and I was a friend uh, with Mark, then I was uh, like one of the big guys in Beijing at the time, and he told me, yeah, just come over and just finish your shooting, I'll help you out. And we were shooting on the set, I remember I was shooting on the set of uh, the movie Kill Bill from Quentin Tarantino, he was shooting at night, and Mark was um, in charge of finding some hookers for the producer, Mark Bender, no, uh, Bender, but not Mark, Lawrence, I mean, Bender. Lawrence Bender, right. <laughs> and from that, you know, sort of a weird gig, uh, he could get me the, the set at night when they were not shooting. So we got a couple of hours every night that we could shoot my movie on the set of Kill Bill. It was sweet. Oh, yeah. So uh, in Quentin was bartending for Henry, Henry Lee? Uh, yeah, I know time. Henry Lee, but I, I, I don't know they had a relationship together. Yeah, they did? I think that's what I heard. Anyway. Uh, probably, yeah, Henry Lee with the, with the Kingpin in, at that time in Beijing. But I think his experience bartending, I mean, in Neo Lounge, whatever, uh, he just like uh, he's happy. He also he want to interact with the customer. So a lot of people would just say, "You look like Quentin Tarantino." He said, "Ah, really? Okay." So that kind of uh, it's a game to play, you know. Beijing, so um, probably yeah, they, they they attended some incredible party at the, what, what was the name of his bar again? Uh, well, there was like eighty eight. There was. Uh... The original Vogue, bar, I, yeah, uh, well, they Vogue. had so many, yeah, but, yeah, okay, well, was I, like, there was like Vogue and then there was uh, Neo Lounge. Exactly, Neo Lounge, that's yeah. it, that's it, that's it. I remember Mark had a, ta had a, a bill of like 10,000 fucking dollars that he did, like he couldn't pay back. I said, yeah, I'll pay back later, and then after two years, he had like a $10,000 uh, bill that he had to pay, and it was a nightmare. So what do you think about China now? How is it? Do you think that it'll ever happen again? Those, I, uh, no, I probably not. Well, I don't want to be old, you know, like the... Que, que, comment dit le mec qui, qui aime bien le passé, là? Comment ça s'appelle, là? Même en français, j'ai oublié. Tu sais, les mecs qui... Les mecs nostalgique. Qui, ouais, nostalgique. I don't want to be all nostalgic about it. But uh, it was really a, an amazing time. I didn't go back to China uh, since, like, the last time I was there was maybe like five years ago, five or six years ago. So I didn't really do the change for myself. I went to Hong Kong, but I'm sure it was, well, it's another story over there in Hong Kong. Uh, but I heard that after the Olympics, I mean, the, the town changed a lot. Like, uh, long, no, not, not long, long, what, what was the, 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 the name of this little street with all the... San Lituan. San Lituan, right. I heard that San Lituan just turned into a, a fucking Hong Kong super mall or something like that. That's what I heard, right? That makes me a little bit sad, but it's the way it is. I mean, they're trying really, to, for me, I think they're really trying to clean the city. And at that time, it was pretty much the, the far west, right? Like everything was all right. Uh, you could smoke your butt in the fire everywhere, and you could do you could do pretty much everything you wanted, and unless you're talking about politics. So yeah, it was a good time. So th that was from like what, what would you say the, the that time was uh, the best time? Like what range of years? Like what year to what year? Uh, I'd say I'd say two. Well, first time I arrived, right? I said 2002. No, it was 2003. It's actually 2002. From 2002 till 2005, it was a super mega bomb. Uh, well, for me, it was uh, just an amazing time. And uh, after that, there was a second period when, the, with the opening of beer mania, for example, which I really separate the the, the, the pre the pre beer mania and the after beer mania, which is really two separate uh, two separate uh, period for me. Uh, both were great. I mean, the, the, the second period was even more decadent, <laughs> and uh, and health-wise was quite dangerous. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> the, the first was really sexual, and the second was the really like a stony, a st stone period. <laughs> we get really drunk and we experiment with a, with a lot of uh, substances and stuff like that. But both of them are were really creative and really interesting, and uh, for me it's like really amazing uh, memories, which is. As I'm saying again, I'm not nostalgic because even right now I'm living, I'm experiencing uh, great things on a regular basis. But uh, this is my little uh, Chinese story, which I, you know, think with uh, very uh, great memories and great feelings. Something else, Piotr? <laughs> what? Uh, tell, tell me more about uh, beer mania. Beer mania. <laughs> 
can I say? Well, Beermania, you can compare it to uh, to uh, in Holland, you know, like the coffee shop in Holland, but multiplied uh, by uh, twenty thousand. Uh, Beermania, but uh, it was sort of a pit of all the snakes, crazy people in uh, in Beijing. You you met like all the, the range, the variety range of the human race over there. <laughs> it goes from, <laughs> goes from the, the punk, the bomb, uh, the guys who's puking on the floor, and uh, up until uh, the trader, the, the million dollar guy, uh, earning a lot of money. Um, all the drinks were free, of course, because we knew the we knew the owners. So I mean, <laughs> it was happy hour every every day. Every hour was happy hour, pretty much. And it, it was a strange place. It was just, but I have a lot of blackout actually. <laughs> most of the, most of the time I spend in Birmania, I, I quite recall some some part of it, some bits. <laughs> But not the complete story. It's just sort of a puzzle in my in my head. But I just remember that it was uh, it was really good. It was nice. The champagne was uh, not not the champagne, but the drinks were flowing, you know, with jerking from every possible space, and there were girls everywhere, and uh, it was a total mayhem. Yeah, pretty much. So that, I guess that was Fun your, place. one of your favorite memories, or uh, one one of them, one of them. And I remember there was sort of a back room. <laughs> there was the toilet on the right and the back room on the left. <laughs> and I won't tell what happening in the back room, but some shit were happening over there. <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> some nasty stuff.